Hi. Um, today, uh, Matt and I, we're working on uh, giving this piano a nice finish, or a decent finish anyway. Um, how perfect all depends on you. However, um, over the years, the finish has dried and it's created all kinds of check marks. Now, on this particular piano, you won't see this, uh, or maybe you might. There's um, a ring here from a plant, uh, like uh, they had a plant on here, and it likely dripped down here and dripped into here. So, um, today we're going to kind of show you how to get rid of that. Um, but meanwhile, and we'll probably work on this one, but... Uh, Anyways, going over it like this, and you notice I'm doing it very lightly. I don't want to get right down to the wood. What I really want is to just um, raise the dust, but raise the dust evenly so that it's nice and smooth. When it was originally made and finished, it... Uh, was sanded uh, to death and uh, so therefore it's still smooth under there. So what I'm doing here is just making sure that I've got this not necessarily sanded through but sanded to the point where it's nice and smooth. Afterwards We'll either vacuum it off or use a tack cloth. Or we may make it uh, totally re-amalgamate um, the dust back into the finish, filling the pores. So it's not, it's not really bad to leave it dusty. Most of the things can be done right in, in situ or right in, in the place where it is because it's firmly in place. So, um, but just be a little critical and make sure that everything is even. Now, this particular uh, frame has this on it. So, I'll just, I'll just sand this. These usually are not damaged very, very lightly. Um, and we'll get the rest of that when we take it out. But right now, what we're going to do, and there's a lot of checking in here, what they call alligatoring or um, yeah, alligatoring or checking. There's another term, and it will come back to me. You know, I'm old, I've probably forgotten more than most people know because I'm, uh, I'm autistic and I suck up all kinds of useless information. Um, but some of it, over the years, has stuck with me and I recognize it when I see it. But you see, I'm, I'm doing this with my fingertips, and I'm doing it lightly. So, all I'm doing is keeping it nice and even. Very seldom do we actually take it right down to the wood. Now, this, this particular one is, is very easy to finish. Squatch, you want to grab some paper and and do a little? Go along the sides. Are any of us on camera? You are. Okay, so now when I pull this, I can I guess I can't pull that in. I guess uh, something we can mention is you go with the grain. Yeah, oh yeah. Good idea. Line up. 
Well, otherwise, you're going to notice it with the green, all the uh, uh, all the scratches in it are moving in one direction, well, making it look like green. Also, there, the, the, the green is, uh, if you do it the opposite way, it won't always it won't get all the green either. Okay. So when you're finished doing this, you can break out the vacuum and uh, start taking it apart and vacuum the pieces and vacuum in behind on the soundboard and uh, places like that, taking this all apart, which is not too hard, that part of it anyway. This isn't like the old typewriters where it actually is taking an arc in order to uh, in order to remove it and getting a little dust on the keys not going to hurt it. Also, we're doing it by hand because um, um, it's less likely to mess things up. Yeah, a random orbital sander. When you touch it to the wood. Uh, there's a bit of a trick to uh, to placing it against the finish. Kind of go into it um, and uh, so that it doesn't leave a big swirl mark. Because oddly enough, those are the things that show up. We found it best that we both work on different parts, uh, meanwhile doing the same thing at the same time. Um, you know, and autism kind of precludes us from actually uh, doing the one thing, one thing together. What we do is, uh, well, some friends of ours, when, when we were invited over, and they have autism, uh, they are, say, um, jumping on a trampoline, and uh, one of us is playing basketball. So it's not like, okay, we're going to pass the basketball and, and do that. But it, this here, there is enough to do where we can both work on sanding it at the same time, and uh, it didn't always used to be that way, but whenever you find yourself being frustrated and you don't want to do it, just take a deep breath and uh, keep moving forward. That kind of works the best. See, and afterwards you can take this off and uh, it will start looking much uh, better uh, in the sanding because you've gotten over the edges. And uh, kind of be careful with the edges because um, edges are notoriously um, uh, uh, it will leave an obvious, uh, very light spot, and meaning that you'll have to touch it up later. Now we don't have a cameraman, so uh, Matthew's taking care of all that technology stuff for me and for us. So, um, I'm gonna show this, if I can get this off the pedestal here. So, 
the, I, and I've been ragging mine off, the dust off. So, uh, so this is kind of how it should look like. Um, if we can show, so this is a dark. And this hasn't been done yet, so it's much darker than this. And um, basically, then we can use uh, something that incorporates. So we're not taking it down to bare veneer. Uh, I and should add that no piano is made with solid wood. It always has to be veneered. And the reason why it has to be veneered is because uh, uh, otherwise the wood is going to warp. So they made their own plywood um, uh, back in the old days. And foundations are uh, second to none. Uh, they're not going to fall apart. Very, very well built, the older pianos. And... Uh, the, the height, uh, you, you um, like all the pianos that you come across are two feet by five feet generally, um, and then however high. Even with the grand piano, it only comes up so high, and then it's elongated. But as far as uprights are concerned, uh, the bigger the soundboard, the bigger the sound. And uh, restoring a real piano, uh, will serve you better uh, than uh, getting a keyboard, which is great for touring and, and great for portability, but it's bad for learning because it's the mechanism that you have inside that actually uh, registers in your subconscious and raises the level of your intelligence. And we'll get into that at another time. And this is where I got my doctorate in. Anyway, so so uh, th this is how, and then we have special stuff that uh, incorporates still the old, the old kind of color with the new color that we put on. Well, we're going to put on a stain, and then we're going to, uh, um, you know, d darken up uh, the other ones. It's always best to go to an all-in-one stain, and in this particular instance, we're going to use poly shades, which is really good. But there's there's different ways of of applying it. You can brush it on, um, or you can rag it on in very thin strokes. Um, but uh, the trick is to keep it clean. And there will be a video on that when that happens. When we get there. Uh, right now we want to darken up portions. I'll probably be the one that, uh, because I'm kind of in charge of the, that. But, uh, yeah. So, let's see what that's up in here. Now, he hasn't been ragging it, his off. Because, I didn't get, he didn't know. Well, I'll get there. So, this is like that. It's, this is kind of what it looks like. And I should also note that some things will get lighter than others, uh, or some pieces will get lighter than others, but... Yeah. And now with gel stain, um, the finish takes it much better. And uh, what I do uh, is um, I often use a conditioner especially when, it, when you want it to, to take uniformly. So I'm going to do this part here, and I can do that with a brush. And I'm just going to uh, get me some... Let's see. Oh, yeah, well, I can do this. Now, generally, you'll want to do your best to keep the... Uh, to keep the... Uh, stuff clean but like the brush and stuff but I'm reincorporating all of this and because all of these started with crystals um, doing this all started with crystals and solvent which give you your uh, all-in-ones or your stains or what have you so right now I'm going to condition the wood I'm going to go over this first, and just have to do it lightly, 
but you can kind of see uh, the way you'd kind of like the mahogany to show. And this wood here is mahogany, and um, we'll wipe off the excess. And, and it's important to note, look at the, there is no more uh, water drop drip mark there. Yeah, and, and hopefully that doesn't come back, but chances are it will show up in some way. Um, but the conditioner will allow it to take the stain evenly with the rest of the piano and then um, you can put the clear coat or you can use all-in-one to, uh, to finish it. Poly Shades is an all-in-one um, but we do have now these are brown mahogany so what I like to do is I like to use walnut um, for brown mahogany uh, it actually makes a very nice uh, and you'll want to kind of scratch out anything that kind of stands out and sometimes it's just a reflection from the light so now I'll just take my cloth here it is <clears throat> I'm just going to take my cloth and wipe off the excess and you can see it's working really nice. So um, in the light you can still see uh, this part here but when we take uh, the uh, either gel stain or um, uh, liquid stain um, uh, of the of the dark mahogany you just you can just touch it up like this and leave that dry then you get to the point where you put it on the whole thing and uh, then it should disappear um, so it, it will accept more finish and the more you put on the darker it gets Okay, uh, so we're going to take a quick break and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can.